All right, so FNIR soft is the software we use to analyze the data. So we just click on open and there's a default folder in my documents folder. It just automatically copy sends the data to a place. Um, it's, it's, it's folder and then FNIR soft looks for it there. So uh, by default, you can find the files and you can see here all the various sessions so we'll open the NIR file. It's actually, this file can even be opened by Excel. It's not proprietary or anything. You can open up, open this up with any, anything you have. So we have this NIR file. There is an OXY file, which contains oxygenation already calculated and then markers. So let's open it up. And we want to load the associated markers. So now this is the data for the task that I described in the beginning. We have a high workload condition from marker one to marker one. This is the uh, add one task, the task where you have to remember a sequence of digits and you have to recall the digits whilst adding one to each digit. So we have a, a rest here and I'm just gonna click here. This is 34 seconds here. We are at 316 seconds. So we have about um, five, six minutes and then about 40 seconds later, we begin the second condition. It's a little bit longer. Um, that's just because the game has a specific duration that it's played for. And then we have, again, about five minutes. And then I think the game, game conditions are closer to seven minutes. If you want to, you can, of course, make these to be uh, make these uh, more evenly balanced. Th this is um, an example. It's not an actual experiment, right? So. Um, we are um, approximately doing it. Um, okay, so on the bottom here, we have the ambient light, okay? And the ambient light in, in the greenish color uh, from the various sensors, you want this to be as low as possible and it kind of is pretty much at the bottom. This means we did not get interference from ambient light, it's a good thing. Um, the purple and uh, darker purple or magenta. I'm not very good with color recognition. So um, yeah, the other waveforms are um, representing the row data from the detectors for 730 and 850 nanometers. So right now, before we actually start to make sense of the data, we have to clean, the, clean up the row data and then calculate the oxygenation. So let's refine the data. Like I'm going down here on the bottom, clicking refine. So we have a lot of options here. Let's click on next. Um, we can design our filters. There's already existing presets, but we could design additional filters with the filter design tool. Um, and uh, I'll, in this case, I'll probably just use the one of the existing ones for the 10 hertz data that we have. So the, the imager is working at 10 hertz. The FIR filter, it's a low pass filter that we use to filter out hemodynamic uh, components of the signal like um, uh, cardiovascular and respiratory artifacts. So um, if we apply this, we'll remove those. We can also apply an ambient light removal and uh, this performs a linear subtraction for every optode, subtracting the, the ambient light data from each optode. Like, let's go ahead and run that. So it almost didn't change anything, you know, because we had very clean data to begin with. So let's go back to refine. And now we have a sequence of steps that we've performed. So we've already removed the ambient light. Next, I can perform the um the fir filtering and before i do that let's have a closer look at the data so you can see uh, what will happen here i'll um uh, change the settings here and i'll zoom in i'll go between uh for example 100 and uh, 120 seconds um oh uh, that's uh, i wanted to change the time so I want to go between uh, 100 and um, 200 seconds. Okay, so here we can see um, how cardiac activity has influenced the oxygenation signal. And of 
course, of course, it would do that. So applying this FIR filter will essentially flatten that. Now, for for this kind of experimental design, where we're looking at minutes worth of data and we're looking at grand changes for the whole condition, it's pretty much irrelevant. We don't really have to do that. Um, it, however, uh, let's do that so you can see how it's done. So we can do the FIR filter and this is what we end up with, okay? Um, we could do further processing steps. Uh, we could apply motion artifact rejection, but this data set is extremely clean. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. Median filtering, etc. So we're pretty much good to go at this point and we can click on Oxy. And now we'll calculate using the modified PL Lambert law, we'll calculate the uh, changes in oxygenation. So we use the refined data set, calculate oxygenation, and here we go. Now we're looking at oxy and deoxy hemoglobin. The blue line is deoxy hemoglobin, the red line is oxygenated hemoglobin. And we just have all the data from all the optodes here. It can be a bit much to look at. We can look at the optode layout view, and that gives us all the optodes. So I can click on a specific optode, for instance, something here in the, um, uh, the right lateral prefrontal cortex. So we can, we can see things without having all the lines superimposed on each other. Let's go to the display settings. We can change what we're seeing. So oxygenated hemoglobin, deoxygenated total hemoglobin, or I specifically want to look at oxygenation. So the, the difference between um, oxy and deoxy hemoglobin. Okay, and here are the various optodes 17 and 18 are the short optodes. Let's have a look at those. So we'll hide everything and look at only the short optodes. So they're fairly flat. So um, we can uh, see that their the task isn't changing too much on the surface of the skin. If we invert the selection, now we no longer see those, but we see the rest of the optodes. And we can see that pattern of increased oxygenation, for the high workload condition between markers one and one, then you play the video game, decrease oxygenation, and then again, increase and decrease. Okay. So next, let's obtain some measurements from the data. So we have to define blocks. Uh, the way FNIRSOFT works is you define blocks of data and save them into variables and you process these variables to get results. Since we had markers, these markers were uh, entered manually by the experimenter, but they could have been sent um, over the network or many other ways. Like this is simply how it was done in this experiment. So between marker one and marker one, uh, we have the high workload condition, so I'll just call it high workload, or let's make it simple, just call it high, and uh, run and save. And now we can see here the blocks, okay, and then off of the space defined between markers 2 and marker 2, we have the low workload condition. Okay, low workload, run and save. And on the bottom, we can see how these blocks were marked. I'm doing everything manually right now, but we could create presets for defining these blocks, or we could generate a script. So FNIRSOFT also has a scripting language interface. So the entire workflow from beginning to the end can be a script and you can run that script uh, for all your participants and just plow th through the data very quickly. But right now I want to show you how you would do this using the graphic user interface. So now we've defined our blocks. 
we can go ahead and save them. So we'll save the blocks and um, I will correct the baseline. So I will take the first 100 samples of data at each block to be the local baseline. So we'll be looking at the changes in oxygenation within each task condition compared to the first 10 seconds. Okay, so uh, because we are sampling data at 10 hertz, 100 lines of data equals uh, 10 seconds. Okay, so next we save the data in what we call the data space. So um, now we have variables. Okay, variables are generated for oxygenated hemoglobin, that's the HBO, HBR, deoxygenated hemoglobin, HPT, total hemoglobin, and oxy is the difference between oxygenated and deoxygenated hemoglobin. Let's just select, I'm holding shift and clicking here and viewing the data. So now with blue and purple, we have the high workload conditions and orange and uh, brown, we have the low workload condition. And we're looking at change for each optode. You can see on the bottom optode one, two, three, up to 18. We're looking at the change from its local baseline. So what happened from the beginning of the experiment on, and you can, you can designate the baseline in in, uh, in a variety of ways, but that's the analysis that we're doing right now. So we can see quite a bit difference, right? Um, for for the some of for some of the optodes, we have different patterns, and you would expect that. Um, and for the um, for the short optodes, there isn't uh, much going on there. Okay. Uh, what else can we do? So uh, we've generated this sort of view, but we can process the data in here. So we can take those variables. For instance, we can take, um, these are the two high oxygenation variables. Let's put them in here and we can perform actions on them. So we can perform temporal processing. So let's do the mean within the blocks. Okay, save that. And uh, we'll call this high, uh, high workloads. Okay, let's execute. And we'll do the same for the low workload condition. So clear the variables and now take the low workload condition, select, change here the name of the resulting variable to low, go back to the data space. And now we have these uh, high and low ones. Oh, yeah, I didn't really do what I was, uh, what I wanted to do. Hold on a second. Uh, let's go back to the process here. So uh, let's change the action. Uh, so we actually uh, wanted to do the, um, the mean across the blocks here, not within the block. So we essentially end up with the same thing when you do that. So let's do the mean um within the blocks so um so being uh um, across the blocks mean within the blocks hold on a second so temporal mean let's clear the var the variables that we already have first of all okay let's go ahead and delete those delete the selected variables okay we come back here to the process and Add them again. Okay, so block one and block two, select and remove. Uh, let's do the actions here. So um, we want to do the processing, averaging, and uh, mean across the blocks. Okay, so now we have a single variable here, process. Okay. Hmm. 
Okay, so now we have for all the optodes, for the 18 optodes, since we had two conditions, two blocks for each condition, we've just averaged the data across the blocks, okay? So um, we're, instead of seeing four bars for each optode, we're seeing two bars worth of data. And we can take this a step further. So we can go back to process and let's clear, clear. Take the variables that we just produced, high and low. And now we can perform spatial processing. So we can average within each block. Okay. And let's execute that. And let's view. So again, we have the high workload in purple and the blue workload, uh, low workload in blue. Okay, that's not, of course, typically what would happen. You would have data from many participants. And so you have all these variables. And once you run the experiment, you would save the variables. And then when you have data from 10, 20, uh, however many participants you're running, you would then load variables. Okay, so we would save the variables after each participant and then afterwards we will load all the variables and when we do that we can perform statistical analysis right within the software so we can do um, t-test ANOVA etc but you need more data to do that one more thing I want to show you is the topograph so within the software we can load a variable so I'll load uh, changes in oxygenation for one of the high workload conditions. And, uh, whoops. Okay, a lot of windows at the moment. And uh, we'll overlay that onto the brain. And we can change thresholds here if we need to. Uh, we can play it back. So this is the time course of the condition. We can accelerate it, for instance, like accelerated five times. So we can see how the oxygenation was changing. We can generate a video out of that. But typically what you would do is when you have all these variables from the experiment, you would calculate variables that represent the statistically significant uh, changes and you would display those. So then this sort of utility becomes really uh, much more meaningful. Right now, it's just illustrative. So we can see what happened as the experiment went on in the beginning, uh, not much, and then it just kept increasing.